Pareto efficiency in, a, in, this, in allocation of goods has three criteria that need to be met. One of them we've actually already covered before, but we didn't know that it was part of this Pareto efficiency uh, criterion. This is called input efficiency. And it occurs when we're using our available inputs efficiently to produce as much output as we can and to get into a position where we can't produce more of one thing without another. We demonstrated this in the construction of our production possibilities frontier, which we kind of made a graphical argument is derived from a uh, Edgeworth box. Remember we had labor for the production of food. I think we had capital on this axis, so let's stick with that. Capital for the production of food, labor for the production of food, that was being measured in this way. And this is an economy with 50 units of capital and 100 units of labor. And in the opposite corner, we had uh, the production of shelter. The allocation of labor for the production of shelter went was measured in this direction, the capital in this one. And we had isoquants. So, you know, if they look like this, for example, this would be the isoquant associated with some quantity of food. This upside down one, when measured from the shelter corner, was maybe the isoquant associated with measuring a certain amount of shelter. Doesn't have to be the same, let's say 300. And we showed that at a Pareto efficient point, I'm sorry, at an efficient point, the marginal rate of technical substitution for food production was equal to the marginal rate of technical substitution for shelter production, okay? I think I just called this efficiency or maybe even production efficiency, but the technical term for when you're using your inputs in a way that satisfies this criteria, so you're using capital and labor, is input efficiency, okay? And more broadly, input efficiency means uh, the marginal rate of technical substitution for all goods is equalized. All right, so this is a principle that extends far beyond just this uh, toy example that we're doing where there's only food and shelter. If we're producing an economy with millions of different things and labor can be allocated among all these million different production of million different goods, food, uh, capital can be allocated to pr the production of all these million different goods, as long as the marginal rate of technical substitution for producing each of those goods is equalized, then we're on the production possibilities frontier and we can't make more of one of those goods without making less of another one. So this input efficiency ensures that this society has the maximum amount of sort of food and shelter that it can now figure out how to disperse among the people. And that's what we'll talk about in the next video.